Welcome back, and of course, we'll be talking about the Nigerian Nationwide, Nigerian National League right now. And of course, you have someone that will be talking about it. Well, who is yourself the COO? Good morning, CEO, CEO Chief Lawrence Kakevin, CEO. <laughs> okay, CEO. Good morning, CEO. viewers. You guys have happened so many times. Come on, they're just being chairman, it, and that's it. it. It's about the rebranding of Nigeria football. Okay, that's it. Okay, so you did, you did get, get to say his name. You didn't get to say his name. Okay, I mean, we all know him. What's his name? Mr. Bukola Olokmadi, not the chief. Thank you. Okay, it's nice. It's nice to be here with us. I just call you Bukola Olokmadi. Absolutely. That's good, right? Absolutely. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Back home again. Yeah. <laughs> the second Thursday is starting today. Yeah. Big games today and all. Are there things that you guys did in the first Thursday that will be different from the second half you had? Well, the, the full, like, like you actually um, surreptitiously started with something that means a lot to us, and that is a rebranding of um, the nomenclature of the league. So that's now you have club presidents rather than general managers. Mm -hmm. Now we have um, CEOs, CEOs, rather than the old cliche. Mm -hmm. you know. So uh, for this second stanza, our main focus yeah. is how to get referees to do better than they did. Okay. Especially with the Northern Conference. And we, we also want to improve on the discipline level of club sites, again, especially with the Northern Conference. Um, so a lot of effort. you find a lot of board members uh, possibly going to watch matches. I tell you, referees, we are on ground. Same thing we did in the Southern for Conference scrutiny. for scrutiny. I remember going to... Is it for scrutiny or distraction? I mean, when you're telling the referee among... No, no, you don't have to interfere with his job, but uh, well, your presence. So let me tell you, let me tell you, because we must look at the peculiarities as Nigerians. And I think I've, uh, someone like myself, Chidi or four, We've gained from being in this business for many years. I was a state commissioner. I was a club owner. Okay. So I understand what, what, what club right. owners tend to do to referees. Okay. And I understand what referees tend to do to club owners. Either way. Okay. So what we did was we we'll got to matches, introduced ourselves at a pre-match or as a referee. We're here to watch a fantastic match. Do your job. Make it happen. <laughs> Psychologically, the referee knows the top echelon of the league and yet watching me I have to be at my best and there's a balance of the match. That's number one. Number two, the eyeballs we've created through our relationship with your sister station NTA and of course going for start time um, put a lot of these matches on TV. Like today the start match is between the Southern Conference is between um, First Bank and Gateway Football Club of Adel Kuta and in the Northern Conference Mighty Jets I guess I think at Amawa um, for next week Wednesday, and all of this will be on NTA Live. There will be the recording that will be shown time and time again. So we need to put all of those things in place in order for us to ensure equity prevails in the league. The best team or teams must win these conferences. Okay. And uh, if you don't give us credit, you, am I arrogant enough to yeah. to take credit, take credit right? for for the fact that week in week out yeah. we record seven. Draws away, draws seven, yeah. seven teams so going away to win. Never happened in this league. Chidi offers leadership of the NNL board has been fantastic. The good news again for the second standard is we have seen the possibilities of more money coming into the league. Okay. Um, just last week, myself and the president of NFF um, had a meeting and we did some uh, pictorials with a car company, a motor company. We're on the verge of announcing. Okay. Another sponsor. That goes to the NFL, but since it's coming through me, the NNL and obviously the NFL. But why are you giving it to NFL? I mean, coming through you. I mean, you are the CEO of NFL. You are not So I went to sell. So I went with my team to sell NNL. Okay, they were interested. And the sponsors, they were interested. Okay, but the sponsors were looking at the bigger and larger picture, and rightfully so. They wanted the national teams, they wanted to support Nigerian football, and rightfully so. And my first passion, my first support has to be for Nigerian yeah, football, not just for so Paris. I went to... Uh, the and the president okay. was good. I called him up at the meeting with the president of the motor company. I called him up, he left everything was doing in 10 minutes. I mean, money is coming in, come on, you have to be <laughs> there, we understand that. Those are the sort of um, 
uh, attitude that we need okay. uh, for, for, for our food. For because, our because let me ask you this. I'm very sure you've heard this a lot, a lot of times. And you look at these clubs you're playing. So, someone wants to ask you, what is the incentive? Because you hear a lot of complaints, but now that we are hearing that things are flowing in, so what's the incentive to for these clubs to play in the league, keep the players together, and you know not have issues of abandoned games or not? And I think that's a very good question. But you must remember that the NLX started from the value of zero. Of course. That's not a so now that we have eyeballs, we have um, we must give credit to the previous administrators like um, Shiyakiumi, like I Chief Emeka Yama, for the sort of platform and foundation that they, they put in place for us to leverage on. And I, I must confess to you that even the deal with Bet Ninja, because it's the Bet Ninja Ninja National League, even the deal with Bet Ninja started with those two gentlemen okay. leading the board. The we came in due to relationships and perseverance. We got it sorted out. And yes, it goes without saying, our vision is to bring in more money so that club sites can leverage on it. And be healthy. More importantly, you know, you know the way I operate, even with Nigeria uh, wheelchair basketball, prize money matters a lot okay. to me. I do not believe this very table tool of empowerment can be done in isolation of not creating huge incentives for those who participate. Okay. So, what are the players players now? Are they getting the dues? Are the clubs paying the players? I think we've, we've departed from a very abysmal situation whereby players used to cry. And again, I was a club owner. And again, I was guilty as a commissioner owing one month, two month salaries. Um, but what do we have present now? What's the state of the, presently, of the players? So, something that I wrote to Chief Obaseki as a sitting commissioner as, is not what they're implementing. What did I write then as a commissioner? I suggested the, the cancellation of sign off fees and the infusion of sign off fees into salaries because most things belong to state governments and salaries are paid. Uh, same time as civil servants are paid. Okay. So what you find now is that players are earning 800,000, 400,000, 200,000, which was earlier because... The NNL or NPFL? In the NNL... In, I know NPFL, but NNL, do they get that? I, I, I know club sites like Warrior Wolves and Delta Force are paying a lot of money to their clubs. But, but I, to the I don't get to it, for okay. example, still needs to improve okay. because the captain of Gateway was captain when I was commissioner. He was being paid 80,000 minus sign-on fee. And it was shocking to me when I discovered this year that he's still being paid 80,000 and he's still the same captain from 2004 to date. So he loves us to be. I only picked Gateway because, again, I you know. when I was in law school, I was told all this people from the back here, Gateway is my state. Okay. You know, yes. Well, I'm they neutral. improved on this now, mate, with this work for just the packages that are coming into You mean from the league? league? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The from league, the league. The They've league. been able to improve the league. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. And tell the clubs, this is the standard. Will you set a standard of what they can actually pay? We, we are talking to club sites. Okay. On, on the, the necessity of having good salaries. We are talking to club sites on the necessity of having a pension. Are you going to give them a salary cap or something like that? Look, you we can never that. that. Okay. But guess what? We are working working on pension scheme. For example, we have been talking for two years now, my company in Ilayo, on behalf of LMC and NFF, for a pension scheme, a 2.5 million dollar pension scheme a year. We are still talking to the bank on the verge of concluding okay. so that our players, after retirement, cannot start living a yeah. better life. Than yeah. what we have you seen all stars all over the, all over the country? All staff players are, are players who, who did represented the country who did well, but are suffering yeah. Yeah. because there were no modalities to create pension scheme. We need that in the NNL, we need that in the LMC, we need that even in the amateur kidder. The more that life after football can be good, can still be good. Right. You know, and those are things we're working on. Okay. On the sponsorship we got from uh, um, Bet Niger, for example, people have asked me what went to the club sites. Guess what? We saw the club sites from paying referees in Dent. So that means each club, at this point, you'll be saving close to 300000 every week. It frees them from that responsibility. Right. And not that, that good. That's what I mean. That should go towards you, right. to do whatever creating a good welfare for your players. 